When are we going to talk about something really exciting like NFPA 1962 and the care and maintenance of fire hose and nozzles? So, 1962, basically the standard for care and maintenance and testing and replacement and all that good stuff of fire hose and nozzles. What they're really telling you is we're talking about a water delivery system from your fire hydrant to the nozzle and everything in between is the sum of its parts. And when you look at 1710, minimum target flow uh, for residential, 150 for one line, 300 between two. And then when we get into in, uh, commercial, 250, and there's been discussion about, you know, maybe raising that flow even more. You know, back in the day, I don't know how many people have done the hand method before about figuring out friction loss for your lines, but what's important or where there's some weakness in this is you have to know how much friction loss is in your system in order for this to work properly. And we're not going to do a math test today, but have anybody, any of you guys ever done the hand method? I mean, you know, to me it's a little back in the day, but still, it does work as long as you know your friction loss. But NFPA is saying, you can't just pressure test your hose, and this is why they made some changes to the standard in 2013. They want you to flow these things, they want you to flow the hose, flow the nozzles, understand your friction loss, where it occurs. You know, this piece of fire hose passed its pressure test. And I do flow testing every week, and I've had hose fail just in the last month while I was using it. The problem is, this piece of fire hose only flowed about 15 gallons a minute, and the only time that they knew that was when they actually used it on a fire. So that's a bad day. Another thing, pump charts. How old are your pump charts? Uh, you know, when I talk to an engineer and I say, what do you pump that line to? They come up with a number. That number comes from someplace. What's interesting about these pump charts is on the left was the numbers the engineers were told to pump to, and they had a fire, uh, and they weren't getting the flows they thought they were good, uh, should be getting, and they had to replace their fire hose. And when they went back and tested the lines, they found out, if you look on the right, that they were only flowing about 160 gallons a minute, but they had to pump that line pretty hard just to get that kind of flow. And that was strictly because they changed fire hose. And when you look at your apparatus, what's behind the curtain? You know, to me, that looks like eight pounds of stuff in a four-pound box, but it's all friction loss. Is this a four-inch discharge? Not really. It's a three-inch. So what's behind the curtain? If you're an engineer, are you going to pump these two pre-connects at the same PDP? There's no way. And I, when I see this, and I've seen this at a show, I think that's pretty amazing how they plumbed that the way that they did. 1962, we're talking about hose, nozzles, couplings, appliances, uh, a water delivery system, and how you use these components. Also, we want you to clean and inspect your nozzles, record keeping, a replacement schedule, just like you would do with your turnout gear, your SCBA perhaps, also flow testing data. So when we talk about flow testing a nozzle, they want you to mount it and test it and make sure that it's functioning properly. Constant gallonage, you're looking at 10%. So if you have a 150 at 50, does it flow 150 GPM at 50 PSI? Uh, if you have a constant pressure or an automatic nozzle, does it maintain its pressure over that range? So if I have a 75 to 250, it should maintain through that flow range, if it's a 100 PSI nozzle or a 75 PSI nozzle, it should maintain that pressure through its operating range. They want you to keep records of this stuff. Record keeping. There's a lot of stuff here, but... You can read it, manufacturer, vendor, maximum operating pressure, when did you test it, did you repair it, what did you fix, do you have a replacement schedule for this type of equipment. And when you're going to test your lines, you need some proper test equipment. Handheld pitot gauges are great for calibrating if you're doing smooth bores. You need pressure gauges in the lines to see where your pressure drops are. If you're going to look at fire hose, and you want to look at friction loss, just get you some line gauges, put them every 100 feet, see what kind of pressure drops you're experiencing. Flow meters. It's a great way to make sure everything's working properly. And where you connect the flow meter can make a difference in the readings that you get, whether you put them on the intake side of the engine or on your discharge side. If you're testing these uh, types of equipment, so we have constant gallonage, we put a 
gauge behind it, check the pressure, see what it's doing. Same with automatics or smooth bores. Uh, smooth bores, obviously 50 psi. We're in Colorado doing some testing, and this particular stretch was an automatic tip. For me to get 200 gallons a minute out of that line, I pumped it at 150. Then we said, all right, let's just change 200 feet of fire hose. To get the same 200 GPM, I pumped it at 114. That's a huge difference, just changing the hose for the same amount of GPM. If you use appliances in your uh, system, maybe you have a gated Y on a discharge, or uh, you use this in your stretch, NFPA wants you to test it in the system to see where the friction loss is and how it impacts your flows. When you look at appliances, sometimes this gets overlooked. Cleaning inspection, they want you to pressure test these things. I think that's important as well as the record keeping. When you test these, if they're not marked, and some manufacturers will put a pressure rating on their appliances, but 300 PSI test pressure, and then max operating pressure, 200 PSI. Again, anything as far as hose made around 1987 or later is recommended to be pulled from service. When you're testing your lines, do you put kinks in your lines? I know some folks have talked about that today, but kinks can have a huge impact on the performance of your nozzles. And every nozzle will react differently to the kinks and, and the type of kink that it is. Another thing that I thought was interesting with is occupant use hose, so everybody has hotels and things like that. Do you get involved in the inspection and testing of those types of equipment as well? Again, pressure testing your hose. Another thing with uh, hose, like supply hose, uh, you'll see, when we were talking earlier about pumping FDCs, uh, you want to make sure that your supply hose can handle the pressure. If you have an FDC that has a high pressure requirement, maybe your supply hose is not pressure rated for those kind of uh, ranges. Also, they want you to establish a schedule. What's your service life of your hose? Uh, do you have a plan on how to replace your hose, or you just wait till it breaks and then put another stick in? And that's not always good because hose can get mixed and matched. See a lot of problems where different brands of hose in the same stretch can affect the flow rates. When you're testing your system, and I think this is really important, they want you to test it the way you use it. It's hugely important. So they want you to pull your stretch, whatever nozzle you normally use, and flow that as a setup. I ask a lot of times, I'll ask people, do you have a target flow? What is your target flow? You know, and at 17 says, says 150, where are you at with that? Do you mix brands of hose? I see that's very common. I've seen stretches where we pull 200 feet, and then in the middle is... Uh, 50 or 100 feet of inch and a half hose that accidentally got thrown in with the, with the mix. Big impact on PDPs. Uh, do your firefighters change nozzles when they come on shift? You, this guy prefers a smooth board, she prefers an automatic, somebody prefers a constant gallonage. All those have to be pumped differently. How old are your pump charts? And then, you know, when you look at your fuel loads, uh, I live in Reno. I had asked a chief one time, I said, you know, you don't have a lot of big box stores around here. And he said, have you seen the size of the houses in Tahoe? I mean, and really get to thinking about it, you know, 15,000 square foot homes and things like that. So do you meet the BTU needs and all that of your system and the communities that you live in and your setbacks? Uh, do you have apartment packs? When you flow those, do you take into account the friction loss in the Ys and then adding another 50 or 100 feet of inch and three quarter on the end of that? So... It's kind of a quick down and dirty on NFPA. We're not doing any questions, but um, I appreciate your time. Hopefully that was helpful information.